Good morning, everyone. Say good morning, Frey. Hello. <laughs> Frey's just getting Hoitsy. Hoitsy and Jubbers had the night in. They're going to be going in our little turnout over there today. Annie's doing her usual free rain. But it's a very, very exciting day today. Little Jubbers is going to go and check out everybody else's stables and make sure that they didn't leave any food. In which case he'll do he'll do the duty of clearing it up for them, saving us a job. You're so thoughtful, JB. There we got little Obi-Wan Kenobi. He doesn't very often have a night in, but because he was on the live, he had a night in after his pamper in the friendship barn. But Frey's gonna do a little bit with him today. But the reason it's very exciting today is because thanks to the generosity of several people, we are having all the stone put down in the front of the fields to make it a much safer feeding area for the horses. So I'll bring you more of that soon. Ray has oh, just come in to get Obi, who was doing his usual. He, he loves to just stand here with his tongue sticking out. Oh, He's not it. gonna do it now, just mm. because I've got the camera out. He just wants cuddles. This is a very, very exciting sight for us. Isn't it, Frey? Yeah. <laughs> so Phil has dropped his digger off. We've got all the girls and Hida over here. And today is what we've wanted done for so long. And thanks to the generosity of quite a few people, we're able to get all of this area all leveled out. So Phil has brought his digger over. Frey and I are now doing the task of getting these girls and Floppy Do out of here so that Phil can work. So to do that, we've got the quad bike over there with their feeds on, and we're gonna go down the long track and get them into the long field. So it's not ideal for them to be in the long field or even the barn field over on the right here at this time of year when, it, when it's gonna be raining for the next calm weather girl. Freya's always right with the, with the weather. Four days. Yeah. Yeah. But it is what it is. You know, it needs to be done and we'll get a bit of mud everywhere. But at the end of it, it's going to make an amazing, clean, tidy space here for all of them to eat their haylage and eat their feed. Anyway, I should really stop videoing because they're all looking at us very expectantly, wanting their food. And we're going to confuse them now by taking the quad bike down the track. wasn't quick enough with the camera to get them running through the gate <laughs> so they're all going to bowl at the moment Hidda's the only one with a different one so Frey's got that Xiao there bottom of the pecking order always so they've not been on this field It's really, really difficult to get access to with the tractor, with a bale of haylage, so I can't give them supplemental haylage out here. They also have little export ponies over there to chat to, which again isn't ideal. And we have had instances of, of those getting in here and vice versa, because we've got all these old stone walls that sometimes they can be quite happy to push them down but what we might do depending on how long it's going to take Phil to to get the work done at the front of their field is we may even let them into their summer turnout which we call the barn field over here and most of it drains pretty well it's just the bottom part that gets really really boggy but the other reason it's difficult to have them in this field is because just even for us walking up and down this track over here in the winter is quite challenging and obviously even more time consuming bringing them in and out but if we can 
get them in through the gate at the bottom of the barn field. It cuts down a little bit of time. But don't they all look beautiful in there? In their lovely sponsored Friso rugs. And they're all definitely, you know, you put your hands under there, then they're, they're nice and, you know, they've got the right temperature under there. They're just lightweight sheets, really just to, to keep the rain off them because we do get a lot of rain. And the ones that were clipped, they've only had one clip. We're not going to clip them again because the great thing about these rugs is that even if they get a bit wet or a bit sweaty, if we're managing to do any work with them, then these rugs can go straight back on them because they wick away any moisture in the coat. Was that nice, Cheryl? So they get lots of carrots in their feed at the moment, thanks to the generosity of everybody who's donated carrots for them. We have a weekly delivery now arriving. And it keeps them very happy. Oh. Hidda just finishing off his feed. So we've actually decided to open up the barn field. And I did wonder how long it was going to take before they realised they could go through. I said to Fro, I'm probably confusing them, they'll think it's spring. So this bit at the bottom, the whole channel along here, because we have the beck that runs through here, it does get really boggy. But they are very sensible, she says, and then they show her up and gallop across it. Oh, Yodel's following her man. But I'm hoping that there should be enough nice grass in these two fields for the next for the next week, because that is probably how long it's going to take Phil to do the work. I'm going to video you now, whether you want to or not. You need some bedding. This is Sarah, who's responsible for Holland Frey. <laughs> Even though she wasn't going to claim responsibility for, for this one over here. Aww. <laughs> Aww. 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 We're like sisters really, aren't we? That is actually disgusting. <laughs> but I have to admit, sorry, Hull, but your mum's far funnier than you. Oh, she's not, that's uh, not even funny. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, oh, you think you get your wicked sense of humour? Oh, oh, oh you're going to have a fun time Thursday, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so on a Thursday, Hall works with, with her mum and one of your jobs today is coming in and turning around stable stays. It is. Which you've done since we started, haven't you? No, actually, because you had have have you not? So you oh, we did. Yeah. 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 But you've been doing it for several years. I have been doing it for several years. Go on, what's the worst thing about turning it around in here? Um, the cobbles. No, because the cobble, because I've got a hoover. So mm. the cobbles are actually okay. Um, I guess it's got to be the toilet, really, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the bed, but, well, yeah. the, the bed is quite challenging, isn't it? Well, it is, especially when uh, your muscle man Philip couldn't move it as well. Yeah, that's true. He still needs to make the trolley. He does. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't gonna happen in a hurry, is it? I don't think. No. No, well, I think Hull could make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not go there. Oh, let's not. No. What do we like release the twenty twenty four calendar early, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I mean twenty twenty five even. Oh, is that why you had your silver dress on? Oh, mm. you see if he'd known he'd have been straight up here. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I need to go and be sick in the <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna leave you to it. Okay. So Hannes is in here tonight with his number one fan, Rosie. So Frey, Frey is just going to put the bed down in here, which is always quite a challenge because of the cobbled floor. And we like to have it as clean and as tidy as possible. So it gets disinfected after each use. And then we get this bed down. So it's a nice, clean, fluffy bed for Hannes, who's coming in here tonight. And this is looking all Christmassy, and I'll show you some video of it later once it's all turned round and ready for Rosie to arrive later today. Phil's here, and he's started. So he's going to scrape the mud off of the front here, all the area where the stone's going to go down. And this is going to make 
Tamara are very jealous. She's desperate to have a digger one day. But then I'd never get her out of it. Just brought in two very, very muddy beasties from the field. So we've got Angel Eyes here. He's coming in for a clean up to go into stable stays with Rosie tonight. So you can see he's got nice muddy legs. And then on my right here, we've got little Nero. And because Rosie's coming, I thought we'll get Nero in, get him all cleaned up, and she can see him with his new Brave Boy badge. And get to meet this lovely little boy who's equally grubby. So we'll head up to the tie-ups and get the hose out, which thankfully isn't frozen anymore, and get them nice and clean. We always clean them up before they go into stable stays. And obviously in the summer it's quite easy. In the winter it takes a little longer. But luckily, because Hole clipped Hannes's legs out the other day, once I've washed them, they are going to dry a lot quicker. Because if he had the long, thick, hairy, hairy legs that he had before, it would take him quite quite a while to dry and he probably because his legs get a bit itchy he'd he'd feel a little bit irritated but he's got his favorite person with him tonight haven't you young man and i was saying to to rosie's mum ruth that the only time he walks straight into the friendship barn because often he hesitates before he goes in there was when rosie took him in on her last visit because he absolutely adores her. Don't you angel eyes? Eh? And we'll get your eye cleaned up as well. But he's going to be very happy to be in there with her tonight. And as for you, little Nero, who's wearing Xiaoqi's head collar at the moment, we'll tidy you up, get your legs clean, give you a groom, and do a bit of groundwork as well today. That's one of the loads of soil that Phil's brought up here that made Angel Eyes and Nero have a little dance around. But we never ask people to stop driving past in big vehicles when they're stood here because eventually they do begin to accept it and know that it's nothing scary. So Nero's legs have been hosed off now. But this is an interesting thing that I thought I'd show you. We're often asked why we shoe our horses. And I've mentioned in previous videos, our ground is very rocky. And what happens is their feet end up getting broken up like this. So you can see Nero's feet are you know, well trimmed at the moment, but because of the rocks, as you can see on both his front feet, just on the outside there, he's got these bits where the hoof has broken and that is just because our ground is so rocky. Now we'll see how he gets on but we're probably going to have to put front shoes on him just to help protect his feet so that they don't break up too badly. And you'll see with Hannes here, Hannes actually wears four shoes. A lot of ours only have the front shoes on. Of course, a horse is heavier on their front end than their back end. They put 60% of their weight through the front compared to 40% through the back. But Hannes has never had good feet since he arrived with us and we've tried him just having front shoes on, but it really doesn't work and all his feet end up breaking up quite badly. Are you becoming fidgety now, young man? Are you getting impatient? Yes, he's getting bored now. He does have a very limited attention span. <laughs> we got Michelle here from Burlington Aggregates, who's come with one of the loads of stone in this massive great big wagon. So what is there, about 18, 19 tonne in there? There is 19 head tonne. Right, of 6F5 stone. Yep. And you've now got to, so you've come through all the little, little narrow country lanes and you, all the trees, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but that's okay. You're a woman driving a truck and you do a blooming good job of it. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'm going to let you head down the road to meet up with, with your colleague who's down there with, with another load. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do I need to take that? that Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.
they're big trucks for these little roads. So we've already got another one down there that's tipping the first load and I'm going to go and join them in a second. As you can see, Beebs and I, who are still out in the field, aren't in the slightest bit phased by it. Of course they wouldn't be. Annie's sulking because she's not allowed to go free rain today because Phil's up and down with the tractor and the trailer. But she's got Obi for company. Are you okay, Annie? Are you sulking or are you sleeping? Annie! snooze weren't you? Have I disturbed you? But they're completely oblivious to what's going on down the road. As you can see I'm at the top end of the arena here. The rain is really coming down now. And this area up here gets very very wet. It's slightly higher than the arena. It's a bit like a river running through sometimes. All the soil that Phil is taking from down there, he's tipping it up here. And then once we get to spring, the idea and all that soil in the spring, we'll look to get it spread out here, which is very uneven, very wet, very mucky. And that's all just outside where we, we live, on the farm. Sadly, we didn't really get the timing very good on the weather for doing all of this. Phil's just up the top, dropping off a, another load of the soil that he's cleared from here. And this is the first two lorry loads of stone. free area for the winter but it does mean that the road is getting quite muddy so apologies to anybody locally who happens to be watching this if you're having to drive your car along here but no doubt with the amount of rain we get round here it'll all get washed away fairly soon It's Phil going back down with his trailer and we've got Teddy Bear and Iceman in the mud by this gateway eating their tea with their carrots because they're all getting extra carrots because all of you have been so kind and donated extra bad bags of carrots to them this winter but this is the other area that I've said before once Phil's done down in the front of the 14 acre. He's gonna come up and scrape back some of this soil. Oh, I'm slipping over in it and get some stone down in here so that where their ring feeder is, they're standing in, in nice conditions. But they're down here on their own at the moment because um, Obi and Nero were up at the yard today feed room and heard a rustling and a little horror you've just pinched a brush through there again haven't you <laughs> you are a little monkey Nero so he's grabbed a broom from that side through the bars and pulled it in now you can only do that if you're actually going to sweep the floor yourself you are a cheeky little monkey and now we're all ready for Rosie and Ruth and Millie to come in here. Sarah and Hall have done a beautiful job of turning it round. It's looking lovely and Christmassy. And all we need now is them and Angel Eyes. Frey's just giving Angel Eyes his last minute pamper before he heads into the stable. And as you can see, he's got his brave boy 
badge on his head collar because he's number one member of the Brave Boys Club. And then we've got number two member of the Brave Boys Club over here, Nero the Broom Thief. <laughs> we don't give Hannes many treats because he gets quite rude with them. But for all the people who very kindly donated carrots, we do allow him to have carrots every now and again. Well, not every now and again, every day pretty much. And you can see how much he enjoys them. So this is from Hannes, a huge thank you for all the carrots. And I'm going to give this one to little Nero over here, who also thoroughly enjoys his carrots, along with brooms. You're not having any more, Hannes. Not right now, there's some in your tea that you can have when you're in the stable. But this is where, as soon as he gets treats, he does get very, very demanding. And they're not all like this, but some are more treat orientated than others. And he's literally only stamping the ground because he wants more food. You're not having little man. You're not having little man. I have nothing on there. You can try as much as you like, but you won't find any carrots hiding in between my fingers. I think that's probably the last load of the day that Phil's bringing down. There's Obi, about to head back out with ice and leaves shortly. Another little maintenance challenge today. guttering problem. It's very hard with these old buildings because as beautiful as they are, they are very very old, pre-1664 and there's often leaks and problems that it's kind of impossible to keep on top of. So we just have to bodge different things as they happen. As you can see, that doesn't have a roof. I think I showed you the other side of it the other day. But we're hoping one day, we do have the planning permission now to rebuild that. It all comes down to time and money, like everything in life. But we'll get there. I always say to everyone who comes to check into stable stays that we don't put a roof on that building just so that you can still see the view. But obviously on a day like today, where it's a little wet and grim, you have to look that way for the beautiful view. And it still looks stunning, even in the rain. So Big Sis has come down to hold the ladder for me while I climb up and try and clear this gutter out. Yes, you are on video, Tamara. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure I want you to go up. I'll go up. No, you're not going up. Yeah, no, I'll go up. No, I bounce better than you. No, absolutely yeah, No, not. you're not going up it. No, I'm going up it. No, because what was it you said to me the other day that you couldn't even do? Sorry? You said to me earlier that you couldn't do something. It's lost, I can't do. <laughs> no, but I can climb up a ladder. No, I'm four it. years younger than you. I'm going up it. No, I'm going up it. No, Seriously, I'm not going to argue with I'm you. I'm not arguing either. No, I'm no. going up it. I want to go up it. No, get... Get away from the ladder. No, don't go up there when I'm not holding it. Right, come out the way. Let me go up. Tamara, please don't. No, don't no, give me the responsibility Tracy. of holding it. Seriously, I need to, I'm going up. I've just done the old my life again. Look who's come to see Hannes. Look, he's yawning and relaxed already. Look, we can see who it is now. Hello. It's Hannes's number one fan, Rosie. Look, he's got his Brave Boy badge on for you. Hold on, I'm going to take that off. There, we can chat to you now. So, you've got quite a rainy day for stable stays. Yeah. So, those watching this video will know that Rosie was the young lady who wrote that beautiful letter and created that little Hunnis in lights. So, did you enjoy watching him at Christmas in Cartmel? Yeah. Yeah? And then we've got Millie over there and Mum Ruth. <laughs> and you sent, you sent Nero his Brave Boy badge. 
Where are we going to put the brave boy badge? Because we've not put it on him yet. Do you think we should put it on his rug when it arrives? <laughs> or we could put it on a head collar, although we've, we've not got a head collar for Nero yet. But he's going to be rainbow colours. <laughs> Honest, that's very rude, isn't it? Do you think Honest is getting jealous because, yeah. because you were paying Nero attention? Probably. Yeah. Right, should we get you down to stable stays with him? Are you going to lead him down? Yeah. Okay, All right, let me get you a rope. There we go. We're going to have to brave the weather now. There should be a little ring underneath there. Can you get out? There you go. Come on, Hannah. Right. and open it up. Hold on. Oh! Oh, there's a door. There's a hand over the door. Yeah, then. <laughs> <laughs> <Only> two pounds. <laughs> Trying to fix the leak. Can we open the gate across? Um, That's alright. Are you alright there for a We don't want him on this side. We don't want him on your side, otherwise he might get into bed with you. here <laughs> sorry I have to laugh hysterically because we're both rather soggy we're both wet through I've taken my gloves off now. yeah I just we failed miserably and didn't manage to fix the guttering but luckily Ruth Rosie and Millie are quite happy with the little pool that's formed forming at the front of stable stays so um, they have an infinity pool I do. <laughs> and but a it's, lovely waterfall. But it's only at the doorway. You know. So that's and... their shower when they come out. So they, yeah. <laughs> the joy of old barns, as I said earlier. But you know, it's it's still beautiful in there. It's even lovely though, and cosy in there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is really cosy in there. So we're going to go and finish off on the yard. I'm going to dry my gloves out. I'm going to get chocolate. Are you? Yeah, yeah that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to have some too. <laughs> And even though it's dark and absolutely soaking wet here, Phil is still down there, finishing off as much as he can do today. Well, it's been one of those typical winter's days, wet winter's days in the Lake District today. Um, but, Phil has done a great job of getting started with the areas at the front of those fields. Tamara and I have got soaking wet, Freya's get, got soaking wet, all the boys and girls have got very very wet but they're happy in their, in their rugs and I've got my lovely Annie here who I'm just having evening cuddles and scratches with. Rosie, Millie and Ruth are settled into stable stays despite the, the leaks at the front. They're, they're happy and cosy in there with Hunnis tonight. So I hope they have a, a wonderful, wonderful evening. It's time now to say goodnight. Thank you again to everybody who's, who's watched, everybody who's subscribed, for the wonderful carrot donations that we've been getting coming through. 
it all really, really helps. Every little bit make, makes a huge difference to the lives of us and the horses here and allows us to keep doing what we do. Um, thank you to everyone who joined, who joined our live last night. This is Annie and I don't, I don't know whether it's anything to do with, with the fact that she's got wobblers and has this compression in her neck. Uh, but she's always really, really loved neck scratches. But they all do. They all love neck scratches. But Annie in particular, anywhere around her neck, around her ears, around her cheeks. She would have me in here giving her massages and scratches and grooms all day long if she could. Mwah. But she is the best. She's a mummy girl, mummy's girl for so many reasons. She's taught me so much over the years, haven't you, darling? Hmm? Love the mummy scratches. But I do have to go and see my, my son, Bailey, who you've not seen much of on here. He's been a little bit poorly today, bless him. He's got one of those winter bugs going on. So I'm going to go off and see him now, get him some dinner. And he's actually in, in the local pantomime this weekend, Beauty and the Beast. So that's very exciting. So I'll be spending a bit of time watching him in that and in fact we're, we're going to make it a team outing we're all, all going to see him so we're, we're going to be Holly's threatening to heckle him from the audience which he would love to be honest but he is planning actually he, he's got I'd like to say he's got a, a slightly better singing voice than Hull at the moment um, and he is planning to to actually sing to Nero soon um, he's got this plan of singing this beautiful song for him so when he does that we'll bring that to you as well right annie you're going to say good night to everyone you you're going to say good night right i'm going to leave you to it you can go and give hoitzer cuddles next door as well because you've got hoitzer as your your stable mate for the night yeah. he's a good girl right good night gorgeous i couldn't leave the barn for the night without giving hoitzer his favourite neck scratches, just on the inside of his back legs. Absolutely loves it. He pulls all sorts of faces. Oh, he says that's nice. You probably can't see, but he's grinding his teeth, pulling faces. <laughs> Is that nice? Yeah. It's just on the inside of his hock. He's always, ever since he was gelded, and he, he was gelded when he was about, I think he was seven or eight, he's always loved the inside of his back leg being scratched. And he stands here very often, like, scraping his back legs when he sees me, because that's his way of telling me that he wants them scratching. And then we've got little jubbers down here. I don't know whether you can see him. You probably can't. These little jubbers. Sharing haylage with Hoitzer, as always, and getting tubbier and tubbier. But he's a bit soggy because he's been out without his rug on today. Um, but it has warmed up a little bit, hasn't it, Jubbers? You want to say hello to him? He's little Jubbers. Oh, yeah, little Jubbers. Right, it's night time. I'm going to say goodnight to everyone. Kiss, kiss. Mwah. Hoitzer going to give us a kiss as well. He says, it's all about me, Mum. It's not all about the little... You see, that's what he's doing. That's what he does. He scratches his legs like that because that's why, his way of telling me, Mum, you need to scratch them. So being, being his servant, I'm going to oblige. So just on the inside of his back leg here, scratch just on the inside there. So there's his hock scratch on the inside and you can see the faces that he pulls when I do it. He 
He's grinding his teeth there. Sorry, it's a bit dark. Nicely height. So anyone who has him in stable stays, I always show them where his favourite scratchy spot is. But obviously, you, you know, you have to stand by his back legs to do it. But I do explain that although he puts his leg out to the side, he's not doing that to try and kick you. It's just giving you more access to the areas that are itchy. Say goodnight, Hoyt. Oh, look, Twix and Dee have come out to play again. Hello. Hello. I think you're rather enjoying being on camera, aren't you? Are you going to be brave? Are you going to be brave? No? Hello, Dee. Oh, I love it when these two come to come out to play in the evening.